Kia ora tātou, ko Su Wartokenua, uh, Clinical Lead for Long-Term Conditions at Mahitahi Hawara. I'm going to talk to you today about our Long-Term Conditions Programme and specifically about our spirometry work. Um, so the Long-Term Conditions Funding is a new piece of funding that was given to us by um, Te Whata Ora last year, specifically to look at population health-based strategies for managing long-term conditions in the community. We looked at the top five conditions identified in Te Pai Tata, which were gout, stroke, cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, and diabetes. And then we also looked at Te Whata Ora's long-term condition strategy, which focused on screening, early diagnosis, and early management of disease, but also very much focused on patient education, health literacy, and self-management. We landed on three programs of work for this year, and they were spirometry, gout, and pre-diabetes. So I'm going to talk to you today about our spirometry work. Um, just a very quick background. Um, so spirometry is the gold standard for diagnosis of COPD, asthma, and other respiratory conditions. It's also useful for monitoring of disease progression. It should be considered in any patients over the age of 40 if they're non-Māori or over the age of 30 if they are Māori who have any of the following, which are smoking or environmental history, cough, a wheeze or shortness of breath. And there's really good evidence to show that patients who are diagnosed with COPD based on spirometry are much more likely to quit smoking and they're also much more likely to receive the correct inhaler medication. And COPD is an equity issue. Māori have a greater exposure to environmental triggers and they have much greater disease burden. So they're five times more likely to die from COPD and it develops at a much younger age and they're much more, much more likely to go to hospital as well. And it's significantly underdiagnosed in this group. So a quick catch up on our spirometry work stream for this year. So our first task was to clear the backlog of referrals. And we had just under 500 referrals that had accumulated since about 2020. Following COVID, we weren't able to um, provide this service. So we did have a big backlog that need to be cleared. Um, and we utilized the services of a private occupational health provider in Whangarei um, to clear those referrals. So far, we've, we've got about 96% through them. So we're almost there. The next steps were to establish a sustainable service. So we identified all the practices that were able to provide spirometry services and the practices who were not providing spirometry services at the moment. Um, so we needed to focus on the practices who didn't have spirometry capability. And so we created a referral system for um, those practices to refer into for their patients to use the service. So any patients in the far north um, or in Whangarei um, need to be uh, referred to Mahitahi. Any patients based in the mid north um, need to be referred to Paihia Medical Center. The next thing that we wanted to do was to support the practices that were able to provide spirometry in practice. And so we've created some new funding streams to support you to continue providing that service for your patients. The next steps going forward are to increase our capacity within general practice. And so we've developed some funding for staff training and also for spirometry equipment. So for the referrals, as I said, um, if you're based in Whangarei or in the far north, um, you can send a referral to Mahitahi via HealthLink. If you're based in the mid north, send a referral to Paihia Medical Center via HealthLink. The patients who are referred to Mahitahi are contacted by our Kaiafina, Carolyn, um, and she doesn't just book the appointments for the patients. She gives them good counseling around what they need to do before the spirometry appointment and which inhalers they need to stop. Um, there are some clinical criteria for the referral, which you can find on Health Pathways, and there also are some equity criteria, which I will refer to later on. As part of this work, we've created some collateral. Um, this is available on Health Pathways. So if you're providing spirometry in practice, you can download these and print them out for the patients. And it's just some tips and hints on what to do before spirometry and also when to stop your inhalers and which ones to stop. So the funding streams available for practice providing in-house spirometry. 
Um, so every patient who fits our equity criteria, we will pay $45 plus GST. And this needs to be invoiced to us. So send your invoices to accounts at mahitahihawara.co.nz. You need to quote the code RESP and you need to provide us with the NHI for payment. So quickly on the equity criteria, so we will fund spirometry for any of the patients who fit this criteria. And those are anyone who is Maori or Pacific, they live in quintile four or five, they're a community service card holder, or they're suffering significant financial hardship. So they need to have any one of those things for them to, to be eligible for funding. So the next steps for us in this program are to increase our practice capacity. There were a few practices when we started out to ask who was providing spirometry and who wasn't. A few of the practices put their hands up and said, well, actually, we would like to be able to provide it, but we don't have the nursing capability or we don't have the equipment. Um, so we, we are asking if you're a rural practice to use your SLAT funding um, to pay for the nurse training. But if you're an urban practice, then we have freed up some funding from our long-term conditions program to support you to train your nurses. Um, and it pays for everything. So it's not just the, um, the, the course itself, it's the uh, travel, um, accommodation, and also the backfilling clinic. So if you're interested um, in training a nurse in spirometry in your clinic, um, you can contact us um, at Mahitahi. Please contact Ray Jones. Um, or you can go to our website and download the form and, and forward it on to Ray. The other funding stream we've released is um, for spirometry equipment. Um, if you are wondering whether providing a spirometry service is the right thing for you in your clinic. There is the option to um, loan equipment on a short-term basis. But if you decide that this is worth something worth your while and you want to go ahead and purchase, we will support you to purchase um, spirometers as well. If you are interested in this funding stream, then please contact Isla Moana at Mahitahi Hawara. So just a little bit of data. Um, so this is uh, the graph of um, referrals that we've had historically. And as you can see, there was a massive drop off in referrals in 2022. And I think that was just because word was out that we weren't able to provide spirometry anymore. We are really keen to see the number of referrals increase beyond the levels of what they were before. The graph on the right shows a, an ethnicity breakdown. Um, and as you can see, um, there was only about 30% of referrals were for Māori patients. The rest were for European Pākehā patients. Now, given that we know that Māori are disproportionately affected by COPD, we would expect to see that number much, much higher. Um, so we are really encouraging clinicians to think about COPD and think about spirometry early for their patients um, of Māori and Pacific descent. So here's just a quick dashboard on where we're at at the moment um, since we've restarted our spirometry. So, so far this year, we've received 56 referrals and the average time from referral to getting their investigation is just over a month. The vast majority of our patients are contacted within the first two weeks of referral, so they are aware that they're in the system. Um, if we look at the ethnicity breakdown, we can see that it's roughly 50-50 at the moment for Māori versus non-Māori. Um, and I would like to see that number increase as time goes by. Um, and when we look at the quintiles as well, we see that the vast majority of patients are living in deciles, sorry, quintiles four or five. Um, so that's really encouraging to see that we're capturing the right patients. And that's it. Um, I'm always really happy to receive any suggestions, comments or feedback. Um, if you've got anything that you want to say or ask, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, my email is sue.ward at mahitahihawara.co.nz.